Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers and we are back with shocking another ranking video today's is going to be on another FPS series we're going to be looking at the postal series of games. For the uninitiated, Postal is a series of shooters created by Running With Scissors known for its excess violence and controversial content. It really is one of the most infamous game series ever. A few of the games have just been outright banned in numerous countries and most retailers would not even think of carrying a game like Postal. With the original two games being considered some of the most controversial video games not only of their time but really of all time. This series is absolutely not for the faint of heart. If you don't like gore or you get offended easily, the series probably isn't for you. Obviously, I do not share any of the views that the Postal games have as they're pretty messed up. There's a lot of racist stereotypes, there's a lot of gore, there's a lot of mutilation, and just really messed up shit. But you know, aside from that, we have a number of games here to rank. Over the years, Postal has actually released way more games than I think anybody expected them ever to. And every game has had controversial content in it in some way. Now when it comes to quality, Postal has been very up and down, especially throughout the year. Some people would argue that Postal has just never even had a good game to begin with, but I disagree. I think there are some good games in here, but I'm not afraid to admit that not all of them are very good. And one more thing to take into account is Postal has been an indie series basically since day one. Running with Scissors self-published a number of these titles themselves, so that's obviously commendable there. But let's get into the games. Why do people even like these games with such horrid content for the most part? There are a number of reasons why people like the Postal series. There's obviously the graphic content and the controversial topics that are covered in this game that people really like. There's a lot of black humor in these games. Most of these games are not meant to be taken seriously at all. They're very satirical. They're making fun of America or stereotypes in general. And obviously it gets pretty offensive and it's even more offensive than say GTA, but it's again not meant to be taken seriously. A lot of people really like the edgy humor. If you are at all into edgy humor, Postal definitely has you covered. But when it comes to the actual gameplay, people like the free roaming, the free aspects of the Postal games. You really can just kind of wander around, do whatever you want, explore. And of course, you can go Postal. You can kill everybody. You can do really whatever the hell you want. You get some objectives every day, but whether or not you want to follow that, that's up to you. And then there's the actual shooting of the Postal series with a pretty unique roster of weapons and some really interesting enemies, I'll leave it at that. The Postal series is incredibly unique despite all of its controversy and there has never been a series even remotely close to Postal and there probably and hopefully never will be. Okay, but enough context about the series, what about my history with Postal? Like many, I was introduced to Postal 2 online as a teenager. I thought it was incredibly edgy and shocking, but it was thanks to that edgy humor that I actually thought it was pretty funny. Back then I was pretty edgy and immature. And even though I've grown up now and understand how messed up these games are, I still have been following the series and playing each new game as it released. And so today we're going to rank all of the games with the name Postal in it aside from some mobile game. We're going to be looking at them worst to best. We're going to be ranking them based on quality, humor, how well they hold up, basically everything. And Postal 2 is only getting one entry here if we included the expansion or the DLC or all the re-releases of the game. We'd have like 10 Postal 2s here. Let me know your favorite down below. Like, share, comment, sub, all that good stuff. What's the shittiest Postal game of them all? What's at the bottom of the barrel? Anybody who knows the Postal series is going to know the worst of the Postal games is Postal 3, which was not primarily developed by Running With Scissors, the original developers, but rather Trash Masters and published by Akella. Postal 3 is considered one of the worst games to come out in the last like 20 years. It's so bad that Running With Scissors have actually retconned it, distanced themselves from it, taken it off their store, and basically said that it never existed. But despite all of the bad press, it didn't stop me from playing the game. Nope, I actually pre-ordered it back in 2011. I was actually really excited for it. I was like, wow, a new Postal game. I wonder if it's going to be as good as Postal 2. I remember there was like a delay when it came out too, but it came out late 2011. I was just getting into high school. I was getting real edgy and thought all that stuff was funny and was like a new Postal game. Let's see how this is. And after playing through it once or twice or maybe three times for a video, I can assure you, yeah, it's not very good. This game has a multitude of issues and we'd be here all day if I discussed every single one of them. So the game is about the dude leaving paradise and going to sister city catharsis. Here he realizes that thanks to the economic meltdown, he actually can't afford any gas. It's too expensive. Well, isn't that fucking relatable? And so he's going to work a couple odd jobs to try to get some cash here and there. And of course, things don't go as well as he would hope or as normal as they would seem. The story is, well... 
you know, it's a postal game, and it's not that far off from the other postal games in terms of its story. When it comes to the writing and the characters, they definitely took a different direction. There's a bunch of celebrities in this game, like Ron Jeremy and Jennifer Walcott, and these, they don't really add anything here. Yeah, the story wasn't very good, and the writing, the less said about it, the better. I mean, when I played this game when I was like 13, I thought it was pretty funny, but I now realize that this game is like aggressively unfunny, and any even decently funny joke made in this game was made better in Postal 2. Alright, so when it comes to the gameplay, there have been three big negative changes that have been made from Postal 2. First off is that the game is no longer open whatsoever. Those big open areas of Postal 2 where you could just kind of free roam and do whatever you want, gone. Every area is extremely linear, you have an, a linear objective and you must complete that objective. There's really nothing else you can do. Second is that there's actually a morality system. Yes, really. If you just go postal and kind of just kill everyone and do whatever you want, you're going to get evil karma and you're going to be a, quote, bad person. If you are a good person, you'll tase everyone and you'll do the objective nicely. The morality system actually will heavily affect your game. It will actually change the levels you go to, your objectives, and the order of how the story plays out. To keep things brief, this is one of the worst morality systems in like any video game ever. It is so easy to get negative karma and trying to play as the good guy is exponentially boring. You're pretty much just limited to the taser and the missions you get when you're the good guy are so dull. Like when you're the police officer, it is so boring and I did not like this at all. Being evil is much better as you get to use all the weapons you want, you get to kill everyone and the missions you get are better. The only negative to it is that you get the bad ending. And the third biggest negative change to the gameplay is that it's now in third person. This just kind of messes everything up. Moving the dude around feels like you're underwater, sprinting feels super slow, the aiming and just shooting in general is just awful. Melee weapons are borderline useless. And the game generally just kind of controls like shit. And this game runs on the Source engine, so this is just totally the developers failing to utilize the tools that they were given. And really, it's thanks to these three changes that the gameplay is just awful. All the levels are incredibly dull, they never get interesting, even when they ramp up. The shooting is just abysmal. To say that the game is clunky is an understatement, and the morality system is just horribly implemented. The story is dumb as shit, the writing isn't very good, and then the presentation is just terrible by all accounts. The game looks like shit, it runs like shit, it's buggy as shit. This is one of the worst optimized games I have ever seen. It just crashes all the time, it takes forever for anything to load. And then the game's buggy as hell, it glitches out regularly. Postal 3 can be summed up as one word, shit. It's just shit. I don't recommend anybody try it, not even the most diehard of Postal fans. Like, wow, this is one of the worst games, like, ever. So here's a slightly better game. Here we have Postal 4, which left early access and released this year. So Postal 4 looks to rectify all the issues with Postal 3. Postal 3 is actually retconned in the story as the dude just crashing his car and having a bad nightmare. So the game takes place after Postal 2 Paradise Lost, where the dude moves to another town in Arizona with his trailer home and his dog. After he's going to the bathroom, he sees that his trailer home gets stolen. And so he goes into town looking for his trailer home, and things, well, I'll just say they don't go as planned. The story is pretty basic, and it's really all you need for a Postal game. The story was fine enough, it was better than Postal 3's, that's for sure, but when it comes to the actual story, and the characters, and the writing, and I just didn't think it was anywhere near as good as Postal 2, or as funny. I thought the writing was generally pretty unfunny for the most part. It kind of feels like an old person that's saying the same jokes like 20 years later when society's kind of moved on. But I won't lie, the game got me a couple times, it definitely got a good couple chuckles out of me, so there is some humor there, unlike Postal 3 where I was just kind of frowning the whole time. Now when it comes to the gameplay, they definitely took a lot from Postal 2. The gameplay is incredibly similar to Postal 2 in just about every aspect. You are the dude and you're dropped into this big open world that you can explore freely and have some basic objectives that you need to get done by the end of the day. You can do them in whatever order you please and most of the time you can do them pretty much however you want. Most of the tasks you are given start out boring enough, but as you try to do them or after you complete the task, then something crazy usually happens and you gotta either shoot your way out or just try to escape. I will say though that the tasks are nowhere near as boring or interesting as Postal 2. And what do I mean by this? Well, the boring tasks, they aren't so boring. They're actually mix it up a little bit. They got you cleaning shit out of the sewer. They got you shutting down a theme park. 
and of course signing a petition. These are more interesting tasks than what you get in Postal 2 where it was get milk, pay off ticket. It was really basic, easy stuff. Here it's a little bit more interesting the tasks you're getting. However, once shit goes down and it's supposed to get quote crazier, I feel like it wasn't anywhere near as crazy as Postal 2. At most you'll have a couple crazy people come after you and that's really it. I don't know, it just never felt like things got as absurd or outlandish as Postal 2's did and everything felt pretty grounded and it just never got crazy enough for me personally. At least the shooting is actually pretty decent. All the weapons feel really nice, there's a good variety of them, there's a ton of weapons you get to use, and they all actually provide some impact. You're not shooting people point blank in the head and they're not dying like Postal 2. The shooting is probably the best aspect of the entire game as again, it is nice. When you're not doing that, you're probably just exploring around the world trying to find stuff and just getting into weird nonsense. The map is much bigger than Postal 2's, but you can go around on these little wheelchair buggy things to try to get around faster. At least the navigation has been improved, there's a mini map now, and generally looking on the map isn't as bad as it was in Postal 2. But you know, I had nowhere near as much fun exploring as I did in Postal 2, and that's because a lot of Postal 4 is just empty. You'll go into buildings and there's just nothing in them, or there's maybe one person at most in Postal 2, you'd always find stuff, quirky, weird shit going on, and that just doesn't happen in Postal 4. I thought the world was incredibly empty by comparison. It just feels a bit unfinished. Speaking of unfinished, we have easily the biggest issue with the game, the presentation, the optimization, and generally just being a completed game. This game is horrible in all of those aspects. Obviously this is an indie game, but it looks terrible. It looks like it's almost a decade old already, and then it runs terribly. I could barely run this game past like 30 FPS on my computer. My computer's pretty old, but this game looks pretty old. The frame rate is generally terrible, and then don't even get me started on the glitches and the crashes. I have not had a game crash on me as much as this game has in forever. It crashed well over 20 times with me playing it, especially as I got further throughout the game, and just tons upon tons of glitches, bugs, issues, everything you can think of. The game needed easily like three to six more months in the oven just for all the glitches and bugs that show up. Hey guys, I do some QA work on the side, so you can hit me up if you want, you know, you need a tester because this game clearly need some testing still. That's generally my biggest issue with the game. Other than that I would say it's pretty average to just kind of mediocre. I mean it could be a bit better. People are calling it one of the worst games like ever in the worst game of 2022 and I don't know about that one but I probably wouldn't recommend it to anybody except diehard Postal fans especially in its current state. Alright, and so here's the original Postal, the one that started it all, and I'm looking at the remake known as Postal Redux that was released a couple years ago. The original Postal is actually incredibly different from all the other Postal games, not only in its gameplay, but tonally as well. The original game is incredibly dark tonally. Any satire that's present in the later games is not here at all. This is a very serious, edgy, evil kind of game. It's not as edgy as, say, Hatred, but it's not far off. It was actually banned from numerous countries and outlets because it was just so violent and just considered so evil. But what even is the game about? Well, it's about the dude who's just, I guess, having a bad day and he decides to go postal and he just wants to kill everyone. Really, every level just has a wall of text explaining his motivation for everything. So I like to make up my own story for some of these levels. Why is the dude killing everyone in his neighborhood? I think somebody shit in his front yard. Why is the dude killing everyone at the truck stop? I I'm not sure, maybe he just hates truckers. Who knows? And the ending is just incredibly dark as well, and no other Postal game would even try to be this dark or edgy. Now when it comes to the gameplay, it's actually pretty different as well. You're dropped into these big open areas. Okay, I don't know if I'd say they're big, but you're dropped into these open areas and your goal is simple. Kill everyone. You literally just have to kill all of the opposition. Once you kill everything, then you go on to the next level. The game is an isometric shooter, if you couldn't tell, and you know, it actually plays pretty well. The shooting is pretty decent, and these maps are actually decently designed. There's some stuff to find on them. There's a bunch of different weapons you get, and there's other enemy types. Of course, there's civilians, and you can just straight up execute them, which is nice and edgy for me, but yeah, you just kill everything. Is it wrong of me to say that the shooting is actually decently satisfying in this game? It's got a good kick to it, it feels nice, and some of the weapons you get are pretty cool. The flamethrower is easily like the best weapon in the game. You just absolutely torch these people and yeah, they just scream in agony. 
The gameplay is certainly simple, however it is the simplicity that is kind of low-key the appeal of the game. It's easy to just pick up and play and you can kind of just turn your brain off and play for a few hours and then you're done with the game. The game isn't exactly long, it's maybe four hours at most. There's a little arcade mode to play after where you just try to kill people in succession and get points, but yeah. This game isn't exactly an ocean when it comes to depth. There is co-op in this new version, but I've never actually been able to try this as I just don't know anybody who's played this game at this point. The presentation is pretty different from the other Postal games, and you know I actually kind of like it. I kind of like the backgrounds, I think they look nice, and the models are decent enough. And when it comes to the humor, there's no humor in this game really at all. It's a very serious game. and. Again, it's just very different from the other Postal games. It's almost like some whiplash if you play these games back to back to back, which I would not recommend. But yeah, I would actually say this is a decent, fun little game. It doesn't hold your attention for all that long, and it definitely deserved to be banned when it came out. But, you know, coming back all these years later, I mean, it is pretty tamed what we see nowadays, and it still can provide a good enough time. You should probably check it out if you like Postal or you like top-down shooters. Alright, and so here we have the latest in the Postal series, Postal Brain Damage, released this year in 2022. This game was actually not made by Running With Scissors, it was made by Hyper Strange and Creative Forge Games and runs on the Unity engine. It is a spin-off of the Postal series where the dude is having some really bad dreams, it seems. And you get to take a trip through the dude's mind, which is pretty freaking messed up. I mean, real shocker there. The story is fine enough, and I thought that the way it progressed was, again, fine enough for Postal. It was kind of what you would expect. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, this game plays pretty differently from the average Postal game. It is still a first-person shooter. However, the game is very linear with levels, and it is, an ab it is absolutely a boomer shooter that really does take some inspiration from Doom Eternal in a number of different ways. The game is very fast paced. It is the fastest of any of the Postal games. You actually do have some movement options here. You can slide, you can jump around pretty quickly, and you even have a shotgun grappling hook, just like Doom Eternal. And you know what? It's that classic boomer shooter formula. You're dropped into these pretty linear environments for the most part, and you just kind of kill absolutely everything. You kill everyone, everything, you explore around, you get some keys so you can progress through the level, and that's pretty much it. And you know, I couldn't have honestly asked for any more from a boomer shooter. These levels are actually pretty interesting. A lot of them are really varied from each other. You'll be dropped into these arenas where you just got to kill everything that moves. Sometimes you'll be doing some platforming, especially with that grappling hook. Or sometimes you're just kind of figuring out where to go next. They actually are decently varied throughout the game. And of course it wouldn't be a postal game without all the satire. There's a bunch of memes thrown in here and yeah, some of them are pretty outdated nowadays, a couple years old at this point, but there's still a bunch of memes here and the game actually did make me chuckle a number of times. It was honestly probably funnier than Postal 4. I don't know, but I got a good chuckle out of seeing Elon's stupid Cybertruck turn into a Transformer and attack you and this is coming from a former Tesla employee, so there you go. Now when it comes to the actual shooting, I think it is actually pretty good. I would say it's the best shooting that the series has ever seen. It's satisfying, it's quick, the weapons are pretty awesome, there's a unique variety between the weapons, they all feel really different, and the way that you kill stuff, again, is very satisfying. It blows up, it's chunky, it's meaty. The way these enemies just completely disintegrate to your weapons, yeah, it's actually fun. A number of these weapons have never appeared in a Postal game, and they actually all feel very different from each other. No two weapons feel alike. These enemies are just wild also. None of these have appeared in, like, Postal games, and it's more than just people. You'll be fighting all sorts of creatures. And it's pretty clear here they definitely took some liberties from Doom. I mean, some of these enemies look very similar to Doom's enemies, but I mean, Serious Sam kind of did that too, so I guess it's not the end of the world. But fighting these enemies, yeah, it's actually a good time. And most of the arenas are decently designed. A couple of them, not so much. A couple of them are a bit too cramped for my liking, but for the most part, I would say the level is actually... The levels are pretty fun. They're decently designed. The encounters are actually good. This is actually a pretty solid game. And you know, call me surprised, but the game actually has a good presentation. The game actually looks cool. It clashes with itself when it comes to art styles. It is a very unique look to it, and I actually did like it. And, and shockingly, the game actually runs well as also. Like, I could run it on my computer just fine. My old ass computer ran just fine. I don't think it crashed on me, like, at all. And I never had any frame rate issues or loading issues or the game freezing up. No, it was actually just pretty much fine. I can't really say that about like any other postal game. 
And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years we're calling this one of the more underrated games of 2022. I'm already calling it one of the most underrated games of 2022. I didn't see any hype. I didn't see anything really about this game. Most people just kind of wrote it off as a stupid spinoff of a stupid series. But we have a pretty decent first-person shooter. It's actually good. Sure, it is just kind of ghetto Doom Eternal, but despite that, it is a good game. I mean, it got this high on the list for a reason. It's actually fun. I actually really did enjoy my time with it. I like it more than Postal 4. If you like boomer shooters or really you just like first person shooters in general, I actually think you should give this game a shot as you might actually like it. And it's nowhere near as offensive or stupid as some of the other Postal games. It really does try to have its gameplay front and center and the gameplay is good. So yeah, check it out. But I don't think it's the very best of the Postal games. I think the best Postal game is just kind of always going to be Postal 2. I think every game since Postal 2 has just kind of wanted to recreate Postal 2's success. And I don't think any game has been able to do it as successfully as Postal 2. I think Postal 2 is the best game Running With Scissors has ever made. And it's actually gone on to be one of my favorite first person shooters ever. The game has been released numerous times and has gotten an expansion and a separate DLC for it. And you know what? I'm just combining everything into this one entry. All of Postal 2 is number one. And I think it's actually a pretty good game. The premise is pretty simple. You just play as the dude and you've just got to do some stuff around town. I mean, you're dropped into this big open area that you can freely explore and wander around. And your objectives are usually pretty basic each day. It's like, get milk, go pay off ticket. Put some money in the bank. Take back a library book. It's really basic, boring stuff. And you know, you can try to do it all basic and boring. The game really will tempt you. You can do basically every objective in this game as boring as possible like you would in real life. However, this game will certainly test you. And you know, the average person at some point is probably going to lose their shit and start killing everyone just to complete the objective. Or if you actually do it all boring, like most of the time the game still goes crazy and people still come after you. For instance, you just take the milk, you just try to buy some milk. You take the milk, you walk up to the cashier, you can either buy it or you can just leave the store with it. Either way, it turns out that the store owner is a terrorist and is going to try to kill you. And then there's just a bunch of weird other shit that goes on in this game, like trying to get Gary Coleman's signature and it turns out he's going to try to kill you, or when you get turned into a gimp, or when you go to the church, like it's just a bunch of weird racist ass shit at this point. This is probably one of the most messed up video games like ever made. It's incredibly edgy. It has a lot of dark humor. It is very satirical, but it does play heavily on stereotypes. I mean. Every Muslim is a terrorist and every other brown person is an illegal immigrant. It really does go there. It's like the most racist shit imaginable. At the very least, it's pretty clear you're not supposed to take this seriously. I mean, every crate in the game just straight says ball sacks on it. If that doesn't indicate how serious they take the game, then I really don't know what does. But in the end, it doesn't really matter because you'll just kind of be shooting everyone up. The shooting is pretty decent in this game. It's gotten better over the years, but a lot of the game is still a first person shooter. You get a variety of different weapons in this game, a really good variety actually, probably the best in the series, and you just kind of shoot at everything that moves. Of course, you don't have to kill everybody, you don't, but why wouldn't you? Maybe I've just been playing this game for too long over these years, but I actually do think most of the weapons feel pretty nice, they got pretty good impact, the way you hit the enemies is pretty good. Some of the hit detection is wonky as shit though, like you'll straight shoot someone point blank in the head with a gun and they won't die and that's always bugged me, but aside from that, I think it is pretty decent. And the enemy AI isn't totally ridiculous either, they actually do try to kill you. The game has some fun little effects to it as well, some weird quirks. There's actually a pretty decent fire system implemented here where if you light someone on fire they can spread it to other people. They can even spread it to you and the only way to put it out is by peeing on yourself, yes really. The game actually has some physics to it and this was before Half-Life 2. However, I can say that one of the game's worst aspects is the map and general navigation. It's pretty awful in this game, especially coming back all these years later. It's probably the biggest issue aside from the somewhat subpar shooting. The game does actually reward your exploration and it isn't just a bunch of big empty nothing like a certain other postal game. It is really quite nice and it is fun to just, again, explore around and see what you come across. And you know, all these years later, it's still pretty fun to come back to Postal 2, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty silly, it's pretty stupid, and it is very offensive, but there's actually a fun gameplay loop here. The shooting is fine enough, and the game is just silly enough you can just kind of turn your brain off and enjoy. 
Obviously the game is not for everybody and if somebody told me they didn't like Postal 2, I wouldn't even ask them why. Like I totally get it, it's not for everybody, but I personally, I did find it pretty fun and it does have its moments. Then there's the expansion where they add a bunch of other shit and it's way more linear but it's also way crazier. And then finally there's the new DLC Paradise Lost. I say new but it came out like 7 or 8 years ago but that's new compared to this game that came out in 2002. And both the expansion and the DLC are worth playing in my opinion. They definitely capture the uh, Postal spirit and they play very similar to Postal 2. I mean it's the same engine, it's the same game really, it's just more of the same really. But yeah, it's pretty clear, especially after playing all the Postal games, that Running With Scissors knew they struck gold with Postal 2. They knew that they were able to do something really good that people actually did like for the most part. and have since been trying to just kind of replicate that success, whether it's with the DLC or Postal 4 or whatever they have planned next, it's probably going to be like Postal 2. And there's a reason, because Postal 2 is actually an enjoyable time. It's the best of all these games, in my opinion, and if you were only going to play one of these games on this list, it would be this one, or Postal Brain Damage if you don't want to be offended. But that's kind of it when it comes to the Postal series, a series of very messed up video games with varying levels of quality, some of them being okay and most of them being just kind of trash but either way the postal series has a has a place near and dear to my heart it's pretty freaking stupid it's very offensive but it's very clear that the developers are actually pretty passionate about the series it is an indie series after all and you know there is some fun time to be had here it's really fun to just kind of play games where you turn your brain off sometimes not every game needs to be a thinking man's game and you know if you don't like postal you don't like postal it's not the end of the world but i myself I enjoyed most of these games, and with that, I'll leave everyone be. Have a good evening, Christmas, whatever is near you. See you later. Bye-bye.